Chapter 20 Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moses, and spake, saying, Would, God, that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord! And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is no place of seed, or of figs, or of vines, or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Mirabah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom, Thus saith thy brother Israel, Thou knowest all the travail that hath befallen us, how our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice, and sent an angel, and hath brought us forth out of Egypt, and behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of thy border. Let us pass, I pray thee, through thy country. We will not pass through the fields, or through the vineyards, neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right hand, nor to the left, until we have passed thy borders. And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with the sword. And the children of Israel said unto him, We will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of thy water, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people, and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border. Wherefore Israel turned away from him. And the people of Israel, even the whole congregation, journeyed from Kadesh, and came unto Mount Hor. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron and Mount Hor by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because ye rebelled against my word at the water of Mirabah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up into Mount Hor, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eleazar came down from the mount. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, 
they mourned for Aaron thirty days, even all the house of Israel. And when king Arad the Canaanite which dwelt in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel, and took some of them prisoners. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel, and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities, and he called the name of the place Hormah. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea, to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses, Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass, that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Israel set forward, and pitched in Oboth. And they journeyed from Oboth, and pitched it at Ijah Abiram, in the wilderness which is before Moab, toward the sun rising. From thence they removed and pitched in the valley of Zarid. From thence they removed and pitched on the other side of Arnon, which is in the wilderness that cometh out of the coasts of the Amorites. For Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, what he did in the Red Sea, and in the brooks of Arnon, and at the stream of the brooks that goeth down to the dwelling of Ar, and lieth upon the border of Moab. And from thence they went to Beer, that is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. The princes dig the well, the nobles of the people digged it, by the direction of the lawgiver, with their staves. And from the wilderness they went to Matena, and from Matena to Nahaliel, and from Nahaliel to Bamoth, and from Bamoth in the valley, that is in the country of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, which looketh toward Jeshimon. And Israel sent messengers unto Sion king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields, or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the waters of the well. But we will go along by the king's highway, until we be past thy borders. And Sion would not suffer Israel to pass through his border, but Sion gathered all his people together, and went out against Israel into the wilderness, and he came to Jahaz, and fought against Israel. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword, and possessed his land from Arnon unto Jabbok, even unto the children of Ammon. For the border of the children of Ammon was strong. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the, of the Amorites, and Heshbon, and all the villages thereof. For Heshbon was the city of Sion, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Arnon. Wherefore they that speak in Proverbs say, Come into Heshbon, let the city of Sion be built and prepared. For there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Zion. It hath consumed Ar of Moab, and the lords of the high places of Arnon. 
Woe to thee, Moab! Thou art undone, O people of Chemosh! He hath given his sons that escaped and his daughters into captivity unto Zion, king of the Amorites. We have shot at them. Heshbon is perished even unto Dibon. We have laid them waste even unto Nophah, which reacheth unto Mediba. Thus Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. And Moses sent to spy out Jeazer, and they took the villages thereof, and drove out the Amorites that were there. And they turned and went up by the way of Bashan, and Og the king of Bashan went out against them, he and all his people, to the battle of Edrai. And the Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand, and all his people, and his land, and thou shalt do to him as thou didst unto Sion, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So they smote him, and his sons, and all his people, until there was none left him alive, and they possessed Chapter his land. 22 And the children of Israel set forward, and pitched in the plains of Moab, on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many, and Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beor, to Pithor which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt, behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot, that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand, and they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them, peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and said unto the princes of Balak, Got you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam, and said to him, Thus saith Balak the son of Zippor, let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me, for I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore I pray you, Tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab.
And God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field, and Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side, and when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place, where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me these three times, unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodst in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kirjath Huzoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam, and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow, Lord, them have I given thee. And whatsoever is first that thence he might see the utmost part. Chapter 23 And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go. Peradventure the Lord will come to meet me, and whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell thee. And he went to an high place. And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth, and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and, lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable, and said, Balak the king of Moab hath brought me from Aram, out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed?
or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee with me unto another place, from whence thou mayest see them. Thou shalt see but the utmost part of them, and shalt not see them all, and curse me them from thence. And he brought him into the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by thy burnt offering, while I meet the Lord yonder. And the Lord met Balaam, and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go again unto Balak, and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey, and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I these, saying, All that the Lord speaketh, that I must do? And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure it will please God that thou mayest curse me them from thence. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor that looketh toward Jeshimon. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and a ram Chapter on twenty four. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as at other times, to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said. He hath said which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel! As the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees of line, aloes which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour forth the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath as it were the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion.
who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I call thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers which thou sentest unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of mine own mind. But what the Lord saith, that will I speak. And now behold, I go unto my people, come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. And he took up his parable, and said, Balaam the son of Beor hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, He hath said which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession, Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable, and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish for ever. And he looked on the Kenites, and took up his parable, and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless the Kenite shall be wasted, until Asher shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable, and said, Alas, who shall live when God doeth this? And ship shall come from the coast of Chittim, and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish for ever. And Balaam rose up, and went, and returned to his place, and Balak also went to his twenty-five. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people, and hang them up before the Lord against the sun that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation, and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent, and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas the son of Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. 
Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri the son of Salu, a prince of a chief house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Cosbi, the daughter of Zur, he was head over a people and of a chief house in Midian. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor, and in the matter of Cosby the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Chapter Peor's 26. sake. And it came to pass after the plague, that the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, from twenty years old and upward, throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel. And Moses and Eleazar the priest spake with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from twenty years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt. Reuben, the eldest son of Israel, the children of Reuben, Hanok, of whom cometh the family of the Hanakites, of Palu, the family of the Palulites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. These are the families of the Reubenites. And they that were numbered of them were forty and three thousand and seven hundred and thirty. And the sons of Palu, Eliab, and the sons of Eliab, Nimuel, and Dathan, and Abiram. This is that Dathan and Abiram, which were famous in the congregation who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah, when they strove against the Lord. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah, when that company died, what time the fire devoured two hundred and fifty men, and they became a sign. Notwithstanding the children of Korah died not, the sons of Simeon after their families of Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelites, of Jamin, the family of the Jamanites, of Jachin, the family of the Jachinites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites, of Sheol, the family of the Sheolites. These are the families of the Simeonites, twenty and two thousand and two hundred. The children of Gad after their families, of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Haggai the family of the Haggites, of Shunai the family of the Shunites, of Oznai the family of the Oznites, of Eri the family of the Erites, of Arad the family of the Erodites, of Areli the family of the Arelites. These are the families of the children of Gad according to those that were numbered of them, forty thousand and five hundred. The sons of Judah were Ur, and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah after their families were, of Shelah the family of the Shelonites, of Pharez the family of the Pharzites, of Zerah the family of the Zarhites. And the sons of Pharez were, of Hezron the family of the Hezronites, of Hamul the family of the Hamulites, these are the families of Judah according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and sixteen thousand and five hundred. Of the sons of Issachar after their families, of Tola the family of the Toliites, of Pua the family of the Punites, of Jashub the family of the Jashubites, of Shimron the family of the Shimronites. These are the families of Issachar according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and four thousand and three hundred. Of the sons of Zebulun, after their families, of Zered, the family of the Zardites, of Elon, the family of the Elonites, of Jalil, the family of the Jalilites. These are the families of the Zebulonites, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore thousand and five hundred. The sons of Joseph, after their families, were Manasseh and Ephraim. Of the sons of Manasseh, of Maker, the family of the Makerites, and Maker begat Gilead, of Gilead come the family of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead, 
of Jeezer, the family of the Jeezerites, of Helek, the family of the Helekites, and of Azrael, the family of the Azraelites, and of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites, and of Shemida, the family of the Shemidaites, and of Hefer, the family of the Heferites, and Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, had no sons but daughters, and the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mala and Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Tirzah. These are the families of Manasseh, and those that were numbered of them, fifty and two thousand and seven hundred. These are the sons of Ephraim after their families. Of Shuthila, the family of the Shuthalhites, of Beker, the family of the Bakrites, of Tehan, the family of the Tehanites. And these are the sons of Shuthila, of Eran, the family of the Eranites. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim, according to those that were numbered of them, thirty and two thousand and five hundred. These are the sons of Joseph after their families. The sons of Benjamin after their families, of Bela, the family of the Beliites, of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the family of the Ahiramites, of Shufam, the family of the Shufamites, of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites. And the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman, of Ard, the family of the Ardites, and of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin, after their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. These are the sons of Dan, after their families, of Shuham, the family of the Shuhamites. These are the families of Dan, after their families. All the families of the Shuhamites, according to those that were numbered of them, were threescore and four thousand and four hundred. Or the firsting of a goat, thou shalt not re of Jemna, the family of the Jemnites, of Jeshuai, the family of the Jeshuites, of Bariah, the family of the Bariites, of the sons of Bariah, of Heber, the family of the Heberites, of Malchiel, the family of the Michaelites, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those that were numbered of them who were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. Of the sons of Naphtali, after their families, of Jaziel, the family of the Jazielites, of Gunai, the family of the Gunites, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Shillam, the family of the Shillamites. These are the families of Naphtali, according to their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and four hundred. These were the numbered of the children of Israel, six hundred thousand and a thousand seven hundred and thirty. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of names. To many thou shalt give the more inheritance, and to few thou shalt give the less inheritance. To every one shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding the land shall be divided by lot, According to the names of the tribes of their fathers they shall inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. And these are they that were numbered of the Levites after their families, of Gershon, the family of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites, of Merari, the family of the Merarites. These are the families of the Levites, the family of the Libnites, the family of the Hebronites, the family of the Malites, the family of the Mushites, the family of the Korathites, and Kohath begat Amram. And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi and Egypt. And she bare unto Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam their sister. And unto Aaron were born Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. And those that were numbered of them were twenty and three thousand, all males from a month old and upward. For they were not numbered among the children of Israel, because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Israel. These are they 
that were numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. But among these there was not a man of them whom Moses and Aaron the priest numbered, when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, They shall surely die in the wilderness. And there was not left a man of them save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua the son Chapter of Chapter 27 Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh the son of Joseph, and these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, and Hagla, and Milcah, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses, and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes of all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin, and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family, because he hath no son? Give unto us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right, Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die, and of no sons, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsman that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into this mount Abiram, and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. And when thou hast seen it, thou also shalt be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother was gathered. For ye rebelled against my commandment, in the desert of Zin, and the strife of the congregation to sanctify me at the water before their eyes, that is the water of Mirabah and Kadesh, and the wilderness of Zin. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him, after the judgment of Urim before the Lord. At his word shall they go out, and at his word they shall come in both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and he took Joshua, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and he laid his hands upon him, and gave him a charge as the Lord commanded by the hand Chapter of Moses. Chapter 28 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, my offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire, for a sweet savour unto me, shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire which ye shall offer unto the Lord, two lambs of the first year without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even and a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of an hen of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai, for a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. 
and the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of an hen for the one lamb. In the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. And the other lamb shalt thou offer it even, as the meat offering of the morning, and as the drink offering thereof, thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And on the Sabbath day two lambs of the first year without spot, and two-tenths deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the beginnings of your month ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks, and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three-tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, for one bullock, and two-tenths deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one ram, and a several-tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb, for a burnt offering of a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And their drink offering shall be half an hen of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of an hen unto a ram, and a fourth part of an hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord shall be offered, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast, seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. And in the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no manner of servile work therein, but ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, and seven lambs of the first year, they shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals shall ye offer for a bullock, and two-tenth deals for a ram. A several-tenth deal shalt thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one goat for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer these beside the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner ye shall offer daily throughout the seven days the meat of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. It shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And on the seventh day ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work. Also in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, after your weeks be out, ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work. But ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savour unto the Lord two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals unto one bullock, two-tenth deals unto one ram, a several-tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering and his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their drink Chapter offerings. 29 And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. And ye shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet savour unto the Lord, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals for a bullock, and two-tenth deals for a ram, and one-tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Beside the burnt offering of the month, and his meat offering, and the daily burnt offering, and his meat offering, and their drink offerings, according unto their manner, for a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall have on the tenth day of this seventh month an holy convocation. 
and ye shall afflict your souls, ye shall not do any work therein. But ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord for a sweet savour, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year, they shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals to a bullock, and two-tenth deals to one ram, a several-tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs. One kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the sin offering of atonement, and the continual burnt offering, and the meat offering of it, and their drink offerings. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work, and ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord, thirteen young bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year, they shall be without blemish. And their meat offering shall be a flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals unto every bullock of the thirteen bullocks, two-tenth deals to each ram of the two rams, and a several-tenth deal to each lamb of the fourteen lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the second day ye shall offer twelve young bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without spot, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering and the meat offering thereof, and their drink offerings. And on the third day eleven bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the fourth day ten bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, their meat offering, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the fifth day nine bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without spot, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the sixth day eight bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the seventh day seven bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. On the eighth day ye shall have a solemn assembly, ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savour unto the Lord one bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year without blemish, their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullock, for the ram, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. These things ye shall do unto the Lord in your set feasts beside your vows, and your freewill offerings, for your burnt offerings, and for your meat offerings, and for your drink offerings, and for your peace offerings. And Moses told the children of Israel according to all that the Lord commanded Moses.